vintage pictures. I can't say that I love it. May 30th, 1845, 175 years ago, East Indian laborers came from India, from the subcontinent of the world to Trinidad and Tobago to work on the plantations. It's a free story that every little kid is taught in school at a very young age here in Trinidad and Tobago. This weekend, we'll be marking 175 years since the arrival of the East Indian community to this country. And to talk us through it and preview it, the impact, the contribution, and also the politics of East Indian culture here in Trinidad and Tobago, I want to welcome to the show Dr. Visham Bimu, who joins us. He's the Hindustani Foundation representative this morning. Dr. Bimu, thank you very much for joining us. Hi, Sitaram. Assalamu alaikum. I just want to say Caribbean Hindustani. That's who I'm representing. I'm glad, I'm glad that, you, that you put that in because that's a very important addition to it. It's not just Trinidad and Tobago, but Caribbean as well. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. And, and I'd like to invite your viewers to visit CaribbeanHindustani.org. Everything we discussed today um, is in some form of fashion when a video article will be there as well as the Facebook page, Caribbean Hindustani. You got that plug in really early, but we'll, we'll allow it this morning. Let's talk a little bit. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the impact of the East Indian community. And if you wish to broaden the conversation to the Caribbean, sure. I have absolutely no problem with that sure. over the last 175 years. I mean, when we look at people who would have come under colonial times, not only East Indians, but West Africans as well, and other parts of Africa, um, the country. It, it's essentially, uh, you could see the contributions. I mean, during emancipation and in arrival, we must celebrate, well, emancipation is uh, slavery, uh, or it's the abolition of slavery. And then in arrival is the arrival of Indian and Indian labor. So sure not. But I think we should look a bit further than that now. I mean, yes, we've arrived, we celebrate it. But what about aspects like our clothes, our cuisine, or lunch, Trinidad, the majority of, um, the majority of Indian laborers came from Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, which was the Bhojpuri speaking belt um, in India. So that was the critical mass that formed what is Caribbean Hindustani or Trinidad. Mm -hmm. and, and then through language, we all look at everything exists through that cuisine names mm -hmm. of things, uh, okay, uh, kalchul, uh, all these things are related from, from, from both sides because. Remember, at the end of the day, even in the Trinidad Bhujpuri language, there are patwa words, and there's a thin line between expressions in both. Uh, that 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 kind of summarizes our, our united identity mm. as a Trinidadian. What do we call the impact that the East Indian community uh, has had on Trinidad and Tobago? What type of impact would you say? Well, I mean, looking back, uh, one thing I want to put in a say here is I find it's not really covered good in the education system. On, uh, from the influences from all this, um, it's not culturally sensitive. It's still European oriented, which uh, tells of our perspective still in a colonial place. But I mean, uh, let me just give you one example. Before East Indians came to Trinidad, couldn't drive from Port of Spain to San Fernando. You had to take a boat. So most of that is swamp lands extending from, well, where the dump is, uh, Labas, we call it, there's a path forward. Labas means base. Uh, uh, lower parts where we dump trash all the way to uh, Petro Trip. Uh, and in, inland well. Uh, so you couldn't really drive to San Fernando, you had to take a boat and vice versa. Um, after indentureship, indented laborers had the choice of either going back. Some went back, but the situation didn't change. So they said to come back. There were people who uh, took a trip twice. Um, but the majority stayed, and uh, they were they were uh, granted parcels of land. Now, we must note that these parcels of land were not parcels of land that you could utilize, which I swamp just referred to. Um, because the, of the innovation of uh, indented laborers, because they were agriculturally based, they filled in that swamp land. And now we could build a highway today from Port of Spain to San So, I mean, uh, that's just one example. I can give more, I'm not sure if we have time. Uh, the landscape of Trinidad physically was changed because of the existence of, because in, in, in Indian laborers came to Trinidad. Mm. What celebrations can we expect amid the COVID-19 pandemic for the 175th anniversary? In, I think COVID-19 gives us a new perspective. Uh, a lot of the uh, organizations that promote uh, in Caribbean culture, uh, they are now doing, like everybody else, uh, online um, 
online uh, programs, uh, premieres, where they would uh, have pre-record or they would previous videos of programs they would have done and edit and put it together as one show. I know the National Council of Indian Culture is having one online, um, as well as the Hindi Foundation of Trans Tobago, I think they're organizing one. Caribbean Hindustani, what Caribbean Hindustani has been doing is, I, I usually would uh, interviews that are done, that talks about Indian culture. Um, there's a, a lot of videos, if people would go on, I remember. And we could talk about this because I also speak Patwa, right? Uh, because it's part of identity, that's my own personal reason. Um, the Lloyd Best Institute actually offers Patwa classes. Our Trinidad English Creole gets its grammar system for that, how we speak. Um, and there's a game we learn called Poundstone. Um, on Caribbean Hindustani, there's a similar game that indented the neighbors used to play. Ika Boka Teen Taloka. It's a rhyme. Um, I don't know, I remember playing it, but not using those lines. Essentially, you you basically put their hands on, on top of each other, and then you say the song, and then you pinch the top of someone and ask them what they want to be, an airplane or whatever it is, and put it on the ears of somebody else. And then after everybody finished, everybody uh, everybody is entangled with each other, and they have to go back and forth. And who remains standing is the one who wins. Um, I think these are the that, mm. that, that, that could be promoted. That video is on Caribbean yeah. Hindustani, and in the time of COVID, that's forgive something me, I for, have. Forgive me for interjecting you. I, I just wanted to ask about that as we are in the, on the topic. We, you talked earlier about the clothes. Now you're talking about the traditional games. Have we sort of lost uh, you know, those traditions with time, with modernity, I with think, technology? I think, yes, I think so. Um, not only in the East Indian, community or people of Indian origin general, but also from the French Creole. Um, I know the Lloyd Best Institute is doing a lot in terms of teaching Patois, uh, looking at uh, historical aspects, basically doing uh, formalized courses to teach these traditions of culture, which are not catered from the education system, as is Caribbean Hindustan. So, uh, ju uh, online, you would see Trinidad Bhujpuri classes. Now, Trinidad Bhujpuri and Hindi are two separate languages, like Portuguese and Spanish. Um, a lot of expressions that I would have grown up with, the average Hindi speaker might, might not understand. I'll give you an example. My grandmother wouldn't like me to say this, but it's a good example, and it could strike a chord. She used to say, uh, she used to say, my area, I will knock you down. The second part is Trinidad English School. I will not, I will knock you down. My area. If you ask a Hindi speaker, I don't know what that means, but it means mark some. If we watch Bollywood, I swear my mother, my grandmother said, never repeat that after she would say it, even though I said imitate it. So uh, that speaks to the uniqueness of who we are as in Trinidadians and Trinidadians, that we need to celebrate in times like this and lobby for the government to formalize it in a more culturally sensitive education system. All right, let me also ask you this. Do you think that the India Trinidad and Tobago Trinidad and Tobago India partnership uh, has a lot of work to be done and can more be done between these two nations with such a strong historical root? Yes, because at the end of the day, I say that I'm in Indian. I'm a Trinidadian of Indian origin. I'm Trinidadian support a team with the West Indies, not India. Um, so it tells of who I am. Uh, unfortunately, Indians and Trinidad seem to be lumped into the Indian national perspective because we, we might, I mean, I look Indian, right? If I go to anywhere in the world, I would be, a lot of people just assume I'm from India. But I'll, I, I say I'm from Trinidad, I'm a Trinidadian. So that identity is what we need to focus on. And that identity, I believe, uh, from a political perspective, because I know you said that, um, I think we are divided on along racial lines by saying I'm Indian, you're of African descent. We don't celebrate and appreciate the fact that we are Trinidadians and we live in the same country. Mm -hmm. So I think yes, it's very deficient. And I go back to the education system and are still thinking in a colonial mentality. Yeah, I like that point that you raised. I absolutely I actually just took down the uh, the time code for that. That's a very interesting yeah, quote. Let's talk about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I will ensure that. Let's talk a little bit about politics and uh, the Indian race. Uh, when it comes to politics, uh, you know, East Indians yeah, I mean, are still... You have, you have to, uh, what, what I find, again, uh, going back to the education system, is a lot regarding uh, 
political politics as related to ethnicity is not covered well in school. Um, politics goes back way back to the 1950s. A lot was taking place in India. Had just gotten uh, independence and it was partitioned from India and Pakistan, so that that uh, Hindu Muslim divide from that perspective. Uh, also was a, 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 a new perspective, but our ancestors left before that. We were still in communication. Uh, I might be, this is this might be controversial, but we would find that the Sanatana Dharma Mahasabha had also uh, come to fruition um, around that 1950 period. Within, uh, within that period, again, because of the independence movement in India, um, but his Sagan Maharaj was, uh, a very popular person uh, politically he had come come into the a, a lot had happened around that period internationally I mean as well as in uh, in, in Trinidad and Tobago um, uh, it was so and if you look at pictures uh, representatives on the opposite side who were usually of Indian origin would even wear the Indian wear in Parliament um, I remember one member of the it's a little family. How my grandmother used to dress, she basically, it was it's typical how they dress. They have an orni, orni means the veil, and it would stretch to the front and be tucked in, and they would put on a dress. And she would go like that in, in, in Parliament. And I remember looking at that picture, oh my God, look <laughs> my style was actually formal wear in the Parliament. Uh, I think these things are things we should kind of go back to and try to empower our youth in well this is I this is what i wanted to ask you does the identity or at least sense of the identity when it comes to the indian community is that intact yes it is very much so the only thing we have really lost in Trinidad is the language in suriname the language is still spoken by the youngest ones suriname is post dutch whereas Trinidad is uh, post british guyana so you tend to find that um, uh, the language is lost there but Institutionally, uh, regarding traditional of Indian culture, it's very, it's, 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 it's still very vibrant and prevalent. And even in the songs, because you know, Chutney music and Chutney soup is very popular. And that is a domain where the language exists. And the young uh, youth within the, uh, in, in the, the Trinidadian group, or the youth group in the, in the Trinidadian sphere, they are, are very proud and, uh, about that. They are very, uh, uh, identity. Dr. Vishan Bamul, thank you very much for talking us and helping us preview the 175th anniversary of East Indians arriving here in Trinidad and Tobago. Happy Indian Arrival Day to you. And to you and your viewers. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, the weekend, uh, this weekend on 